been vacuuming now about a half hour, and uh, these are just the ones returning from the field. Some of them have uh, prey, spiders, and whatnot, and kind of trying to film them uh, taking care of the larvae. They come back and they feed the larvae. See the one on the lower comb on the left? It's got some ball of prey. It's a too too bad I gotta kill him, but I like to study him. I like get get a chance to study him doing this, so I share this little tidbit. Really cool creatures. Kind of share food. Workers come back and they uh, transfer food from each to each other's mandibles. It just happened a couple seconds ago. They chew it up some more and then they feed it to the larva, as you can see there. Film with my phone. It's a shame this nest has to be killed. A uh, customer here uh, said their grandkids play in the yard, so didn't want to take the chance. But you can see they're busy. Even they, just no matter what happens, they just, uh, it's like their instinct, they just feed the larva and keep going, like no matter what. You know, I vacuumed up like probably, this is probably a 170 worker nest, and uh, these are the workers that are left. See they're cooperating with each other up at the top too, transferring liquids. Then they go and uh, feed it to the larva. They just keep going no matter what. Ripped open the nest and they just, they just got that drive to tend the brood. All my respect to them. So here's some roosters behind me. I'm out in the country. A little town of Kimberton, Kimberton, Pennsylvania, between Phoenixville and Downingtown. Hopefully this is turned out on the camera. Strictly a behavioral video about their worker behavior, worker cooperation, and how they uh, tend the tend the brood. Bottom comb there is a reproductive comb, and the top one rears workers. That's why I kind of hang out and vacuum for a while because these are all the ones, like I said, just returning, and they can. There can be some that are out for you know two hours, 90 minutes to two hours. I don't stay that long, but my goal is to get 95% of them. So these would be all the ones that I would vacuum up in uh, the time hanging out. So the swarm is pretty much done, but this is just the tedious part waiting. But I figure I'd kind of observe their behavior, what the returning foragers do. Queen's probably up top, hiding between that top comb and the envelope up top. It's about, I'd say, 5.15 p.m. Thir um, Wednesday, August 15th. Been doing jobs every day. Very busy, making a lot of money. So basically, um, the queen is right there. And then that's a t these are two tendrils. And so when a wasp first hatches out, it probably can't fly for about two days, two or three days. Um, so they stay in the nest. And there's another one there, that's a tenoral. They actually, I'll show, uh, also, excuse me, don't, I've got the suit on, sorry to talk, but they don't have um, the, uh, venom, their venom glands not fully developed, so they um, can't really sting, although I'm not gonna test that out, this is just what, from what I've read. But they don't, they're not as, they're not aggressive either, so they can't fly, and um, I don't think that they can sting either, so that's a tenoral adult. So she'll probably take her first flight uh, tomorrow or the next day. And then the queen, it's there on the, actually she's hiding behind that worker that you can see the kind of the side of the head, that's uh, another tenor, and then the queen is below her. Um, so these are all workers that probably hatched out like today. There's the queen there. So she, um, her wings get worn down and she kind of loses her ability to fly from the friction of inserting her abdomen into the paper cells, the wings actually go into and they get worn down. She also gets, uh, just from not, foraging at all she like I guess her flight muscles also get weak so yeah she won't fly like I said I feel bad doing this I really do but um, it's what I get paid to do and I like studying their behavior and this gives me a chance to do that this is one of my favorite species out of Ferdolico Vespula this is my uh, my favorite probably 
Um, aerial yellow jacket's cool too, but I'd say uh, maculata. The species Dolico vespula maculata takes the cake uh, for, for Dolico vespula. And my favorite species probably Vespula vedua or maybe Germanica. So yeah, they're just kind of looking around, not real aggressive. And yeah, the queen's hanging out with her uh, very young daughters there. The queen's born last year, and she you see she's grooming there. I call it maculata because uh, they have like mostly black bodies, and then their their faces and abdomen have they have a black marking so it's like a maculata means marking in Latin and then dolico means long and they have a long face compared to the cavity nesting yellow jackets now they would just actually be trying to get food from the larva because they uh, actually drink the larval saliva secretions the carbohydrate source so yeah, and uh, some of the catch in there. And have a good one.